By the time this video releases, roughly 48 hours will have passed since Lincoln Park announced their comeback, and my God, what an absolute mess it has turned into with controversy over Scientology and Danny Masterson, a band member leaving the band, another member sitting out the upcoming tour, everything coming all at once, and it really feels like one thing after another. Welcome back to The Logan Show. Let's break it down. There are three main things that I want to cover here. One, the Emily Armstrong, Scientology, and Danny Masterson saga. Two, Brad Delson not touring with the band on their upcoming From Zero World Tour and possibly any future tours. And three, something that we already kind of covered in the last video, so we'll just briefly talk about it uh, later on, and that's Rob Borden being replaced by Colin Britton. We'll start with the Emily Armstrong stuff, as there really is just so much to unpack with that. Since she was announced as the new co-vocalist of Linkin Park, the reaction's been very mixed, and, and not just her performance, which that's not really something that we're going to go over here. Uh, the whole last video was really dedicated to that, so you can check that out. I'll put it down below. But a lot of the mixed reactions, aside from her performance, are coming from her ties to Scientology and past support of disgraced that 70s show actor Danny Masterson. I'll be honest, I'm not much of an expert on Emily Armstrong or the band that she comes from, Dead Sarah, but after doing some digging around, I can't say that while it seems like she's never really publicly identified herself as a Scientologist, she did support Danny Masterson during his 2020 rape trial. Obviously, Masterson is a well-known Scientologist, uh, and she has released a statement about that, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. But she also attended a Scientology gala in 2013, uh, which you can see the photo here, where she's standing alongside the Mars Volta and at the drive-in frontman Cedric Bixler Zavala, which leads me into the next point. Both Cedric and his wife, Chrissy Carnell Bixler, are former Scientologists, with Chrissy being one of Masterson's accusers. And while Masterson was found guilty on two of the three rape charges against him, he was not found guilty on the allegations brought against him by Carnell Bixler. That said, on Friday, Chrissy made a series of Instagram stories calling out Emily Armstrong and I'm not going to read them all verbatim. There's three of them. They're all fairly lengthy. I am going to read the first one. I'll put the other two up on the screen as we talk about them, uh, and you can pause and read them in their entirety if you want to. The first one, though, which is probably the most important, reads, Linkin Park's new lead singer is a hardcore Scientologist who supported convicted serial rapists both in and out of court. Emily Armstrong is a true believer of the Scientology cult slash criminal organization that engages in human and child trafficking, child and elder abuse, the cover-ups of countless essays on children and adults. Also is a true believer of L. Ron Hubbard, who said homosexuals are sexual deviants on the same level as pedophiles, and all homosexuals should be sent off to a leper colony. You can read all about Scientologists' views on the LGBT community and science of survival or Dianetics. After that first post, she then shared a screenshot that her husband Cedric had at one point left on Armstrong's band Dead Sarah's page, which alleges a number of things, including Armstrong and a group of other Scientologists surrounding a Jane Doe as she was trying to leave the elevators, leading to a court sheriff having to escort them away, while also noting that Armstrong was in court to support Danny Masterson in his preliminary trial, which is fact, as Emily herself confirmed it, and we'll get to that shortly, and he also implies that she was born into Scientology, so without her ever having publicly confirming her connection, uh, or current status within the organization, if any. I suppose it is possible that that's true. She could have been born into it, not necessarily uh, voluntarily involved. But don't forget that she did attend that gala. But then again, that was like 10, 11 years ago. I think that was back in uh, 2013. But I'm sure that, you know, given relationships you could potentially have, uh, I'm sure that you could be invited to a gala without necessarily having to be a member. Chrissy finally concludes with a post reflecting on her husband's relationship with both Chester Bennington and Chris Cornell and their mutual goal to fight trafficking, which in part reads, Chester was a child essay survivor. Chester and Chris had a beautiful bond and I'm told shared a common goal to fight human and child trafficking. Scientology is a human and child trafficking organization protected by a 501c3 granted under the Clinton administration. Lincoln Park just replaced Chester with a hardcore second generation Scientologist. Rest in peace. I think the point that Chrissy is trying to make there is that if in fact Emily is a current Scientologist, 
then her views would not line up with that of Chester's. So essentially having her in Lincoln Park could basically in turn tarnish the legacy of the band. That said, Emily did release a statement last night on her IG story addressing her past support of Danny Masterson, saying, Hi, I'm Emily. I'm new to so many of you, and I wanted to clear the air about something that happened a while back. Several years ago, I was asked to support someone I considered a friend at a court appearance and went to one early hearing as an observer. Soon after, I realized I shouldn't have. I always try to see the good in people, and I misjudged him. I have never spoken with him since. Unimaginable details emerged and he was later found guilty. To say it as clearly as possible, I do not condone abuse or violence against women and I empathize with the victims of these crimes. Obviously, she did not mention Scientology whatsoever in that post and for what reason, I don't know. But from the very surface level uh, understanding of Scientology that I have, it does sound like uh, one of those things that once you're in, it can be very difficult to leave. Uh, which I, it kind of sounds like the mob, honestly. Uh, but obviously, it can be done, as Danny Masterson's That 70s Show co-star, Laura Prepon, was also a Scientologist herself, but has since left the organization. So, I don't know. It's maybe possible that this is something that Emily will address uh, later on down the line, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, personally, I feel like if it was something she was going to address... She would have addressed it in her statement last night uh, alongside talking about Danny Masterson. But regardless, you know, I think that as a lot of this Lincoln Park hype begins to die down, as the news begins to settle down, once there's not so many eyes on them, I, I honestly think that a lot of people will likely just move on from it uh, and the band will just go on and do their th do their own thing. But uh, on the flip side, I don't know. In this day and age with this kind of stuff, uh, who really knows for sure? All right, moving on now to something that was definitely a bummer to find out, and that's that guitarist Brad Delson will not be joining the band for their upcoming tour and possibly uh, any future tours given the language that he used in a statement uh, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, you know, during the big announcement on Thursday, he was not present with Alex Fetter filling in in his place. And initially, I guess I had thought that maybe Brad was just absent due to a, a personal reason, which I don't know what that could be. Obviously, this was a, a pretty big moment to not be there for. And uh, when Mike Shinoda was introducing the band members, when, it, when he got to uh, Alex, he said something along the lines of, and filling in for Brad Delson is Alex Fetter. In a statement yesterday, though, Delson did, in fact, confirm that he will not be present for the upcoming tour. Uh, and again, the statement is, is fairly lengthy, so I'm only going to read part of it, but I am going to put it up on the screen here. And it in part reads, Over the years, I've realized I thrive most when I'm actively working with my bandmates behind the scenes, in the studio, collaborating on our new music, and helping build our live show. I am so proud of everything we continue to create together. While I will not be performing on tour in this new chapter, I am super excited to introduce Alex, my handsome deputy, on the road. Alex is a world-class musician, a kind and thoughtful friend, and we are truly fortunate that he'll be contributing his unique talent to our LP universe. Fresh eyes, honest appreciation, and devoted teamwork have brought us to this special moment. The privilege of sharing our creativity with you. Thank you for joining us on the journey. I guess in theory it is possible that he could return uh, for a future tour, and especially now and with, with reunions and all that kind of stuff, never say never. Uh, and supposedly the band is looking to do a stadium tour in 2025, which uh, I'm just so over stadium shows. But anyways, you know, when he says... I will not be performing on tour in this new chapter. I guess I take that to mean uh, moving forward long term, he's not going to be there, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I have seen some people suggesting that he's unhappy with the current direction of the band or, you know, saying this and that and whatever, but I don't really put any stock into that. I don't really think there's anything to it because he's in the new promo shots uh, with, with the new lineup of the band with Emily and, and Colin and all that. And moreover, he clearly states in that statement that he is still uh, a part of the band just behind the scenes, you know, working uh, on new music, the stage production, all that kind of stuff. So really, it, it probably comes down to just one uh, one of two things. He, he's either got a, a personal conflict, something going on in his life that's preventing him from touring, but what's probably more likely is that he just doesn't want to tour anymore, and it happens all the time. 
you know, he's still uh, he's still a member of the band. He'll still get his percentage of everything. And most likely his stand-in, Alex Fetter, he's just getting paid a, a weekly salary to tour, and that's that. Finally, the last thing, which again, we're going to quickly recap here because we uh, talked about it a little bit more in depth on my last video, but it's the absence of drummer Rob Borden, who apparently is no longer a member of the band at all and has been replaced by Colin Britton. According to Mike Shinoda in a recent Billboard interview, ever since Chess died back in 2017 rob had been slowly uh distancing himself from the rest of the guys in the band and i guess he was not present for the recent hybrid theory re-release the paper cuts release out of that which you know is totally understandable i think if i personally were in that kind of situation one of my bandmates died i think i personally would have a hard time uh moving forward uh, without them as well uh, just like rob is having a hard time without chester it seems uh but it is definitely a bummer and i say a bummer not just because he's no longer there but at least in terms of, of touring and live performances there's just three original core members left mike shinoda joe Hahn, and dave phoenix farrell with three new members emily armstrong colin Britton, and alex fetter and i think that's where a lot of these comments saying things like it's not lincoln park anymore and you know things like that I think that's where where those comments are, are coming from is because you know at this point it's it's half old school and half new at this point and that's you know a big point of contention for a lot of people people already have a very hard time with just one member change let alone three again it does sound like brad delson is still a part of the band but behind the scenes uh and will likely be contributing to, to future lincoln park releases so i guess in terms of new music it's it's four out of six of the original members with Emily and Colin being the only new ones. But, you know, even then, two, three member changes all at once, especially, can be a very tough pill uh, for some people to swallow. Like I said, though, I really just kind of wanted to break all of this down as there, there really is a lot to it. Do I think that any of this, though, will affect the band moving forward? Probably not. But again, we do live in interesting times. So I guess we'll see if any of this stuff has an effect on ticket sales or uh, streaming for future releases or anything like that. But I, I don't know, personally, I, I just don't see it. That being said though, I would love to know your thoughts on all of this, so let me know down below. All right though, I gotta run. My fiance is waiting to find a place for her head in between me, so I gotta go. But thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you wanna see more, and I will see you next time on The Logan Show.